How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Today, in episode number 232, we are back grading Ryan Pace's 2021 draft class. Might have been his most impressive draft class of all time, so we're going to take a look back at all of the picks and give our comprehensive thoughts on all of them. Guys, before I introduce myself and my co-host, I would like to say we are definitely back uh, trying to make Bears content every day of the week. So do us a favor, drop a like and subscribe. If you're listening on any of the podcast platforms, do us a favor and drop us a follow as well. And we're going to keep coming back to you guys with the content. I'm your host, Chris Maltby. Today, grading these picks, I am joined by both of my co-hosts, Parsh Shaw, as well as Jalen McClinton. Fellas, how's it going? How was your weekend? Uh, it was a, it's been a busy week on weekend, you know, I just got finals this week. So just been cranking out those and then we're going to move back. I'm going to be moving back home next week or this weekend. So, you know, uh, back in Illinois, um, back to back home. Illinois, man. Yeah. I'm going to be back home. So it's going to be nice. Uh, we're probably going to be pumping out a lot more videos when we're home. Cause there's going to be a lot less things to do. So Jalen, what's going on? How was your weekend? You got your first baseball game today? He does, and he's muted, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's actually like yeah, two hours, so I have to I have to actually like get ready and leave the house. But um, I'm in a new house. I've been moving this whole weekend. I started moving on what the first show that was two days ago. So uh, I, I was surprised I was still able to like watch the whole draft. Like I didn't have no internet when I first got into the house. So I was like uh, using a hotspot. It was super laggy, yeah. but. You know, I was committed to watching the, you know, the whole, you know, day three of the draft because, you know, it's pace. Pace likes to move up. Surprisingly, he didn't move up. At- oh, you're muted again. Well, uh, let's hop Whoa. into this. Let's hop right. into this. Yeah, just, just continue. Bro. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's important that you bring up day three because I wasn't really able to watch too much of day three myself. But Bears definitely made some interesting picks in day three, and we're here to grade all the picks as well as the entirety of the draft today. <laughs> Uh, so let's start off with the superstar, the franchise quarterback, Justin Fields out of Ohio State. Bears had to move up to make this move a possibility. Um, and I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. Uh, you know, that being said, if Fields doesn't pan out, that would obviously – Uh, That grade would definitely diminish. But as for right now, the Bears know what they needed to do. They needed to go up and get their franchise quarterback. Uh, There was always an outside chance that it happens. I wasn't too confident that it was actually going to happen, but the board played out in our favor. He dropped below the 10th pick, uh, and Ryan Pace made a move up to go and get him. So uh, I'm going to give the Justin Fields pick an A-plus in my mind. Uh, Definitely uh, hit the nail on the head. So, uh, yeah, that's an A-plus, and I'm sure you guys are probably agreeing. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you as well. I'm going to give it an A-plus. I mean, it's obvious. This was what all three of us wanted to happen was, at the end of the day, this was our dream scenario. Um, You know, for Justin Fields to fall below the 10th pick was a blessing, if anything. Uh, We didn't have to give up more picks. And, uh, you know, I'm excited. We got our franchise quarterback. I'm some hope. Yeah, but Jalen's going to give it an A-plus as well. Yeah, Jalen, that was the dream scenario all along. Didn't think it was actually going to come to fruition, mm-hmm. but it did. So would you give this pick an A-plus as well? Of course. Like I think that like the whole you know NFL fan base or anybody that watches football is you know giving the Bears an A-plus for this pick. Uh, like you said, even if it you know doesn't pan out, you know, God forbid, you know, knock on wood and stuff like that, um, that even if, you know, like I said, Justin Fields doesn't work out, you can't blame Pace for trading up. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people wanted this quarterback. They, some people had him as the best quarterback or the second best quarterback on the draft board, and we got him at 11. So, you know, this is obviously way different from Mitchell Trubisky. People were surprised that we traded at one spot to get him. Um, and, you know, obviously he, he didn't pan out because, you know, people still, you know, thought that Deshaun Watson was better. Some people still thought, you know, Mitchell Trubisky was the best quarterback on the board. But, you know, training on one spot, you know, was a bad idea for a one-year wonder. Uh, Justin Fields is a way different, you know, prospect coming out um, than, than Mitchell Trubisky was. So it's an mm-hmm. A-plus. You know, right now, like you said, even if it doesn't pan out, you know, looking back at it, I would still give Pace an A-plus for, for you know, uh, risking the biscuit and trying to get us a franchise quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, looking at this pick, everyone thought the Bears should do it. It seems yeah. like there was consensus that the Bears should do it. The national media is praising the Bears for moving up and doing it. So it made sense. And I hope Justin Fields will be able to pan out in Chicago once again, a lot more highly toted of a prospect than Mitchell Trubisky was. 
and also it's interesting to see that at least a quarter of the league had him rated higher than they did Trevor Lawrence on their draft boards. That was confirmed this morning on Good Morning Football that at least eight teams had Justin Fields as their quarterback one over Trevor Lawrence, uh, the unanimous number one overall pick. So should be interesting to see when he gets to play, when uh, how it pans out. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a ton more coverage on Fields moving into the summer with training camp and stuff like that happening. We haven't reacted to rounds two through seven yet, but we did see a quick another trade up uh, on Friday night. Uh, pick 39 overall, Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma State. If you told me we were going to have him and Fields, I would have laughed you out of the room. I didn't think that was close to a possibility, but Jenkins slipped to the second round. Uh, the Bears cut Charles Leno Jr. this morning. Jenkins is, is slated to start at left tackle. He's naturally a right tackle, but Ian Rappaport said that the Bears want to put him there at left tackle, and I'm sure he'll be perfectly fine. But uh, I'm going to give this pick an A. I The only reason it wouldn't be an A-plus is because I feel like at some point Ryan Pace has to learn to not give up future picks. Uh, I do think that's definitely important, and he's done that a lot throughout his career, even though I do think – uh, this is going to be his best draft when it all goes down. But, um, yeah, Tevin Jenkins was a great pick. Starting offensive tackle, exactly what we needed, protection for Dalton and or Fields. So he's going to be here for a while. I think he's going to be an all-pro and a pro bowler eventually once it's all said and done. I'm going to give the Tevin Jenkins a pick in A. Uh, Parth, what do you think? I'm going to give him an A++++. plus plus plus. Um, I think this is the best pick Pace has made in a while. Um uh, this best pick in the draft for the Bears. Uh, Tevin Jenkins gonna immediate, is an immediate starter. Uh, he's going to start at left tackle for the Bears, and he's going to be productive. Um, you know, he's going to be a really good left tackle for the Bears. Uh, he's going to be a stud. I expect him to play really well out of the gates. I don't expect many troubles. Um, you know, he was a, he was great at Oklahoma State. Uh, it was nice seeing him fall to the second round. I did not expect that, like you said, when if you would have laughed someone out of the room if we got Fields and Jenkins. Uh, and I would have done the same. Uh, I was expecting the Bears to draft Jenkins at 20 if all the quarterbacks were gone. So yep. this is a dream scenario. Uh, once again, another dream scenario. So, you know, Ryan Pace, the Bears were very lucky in this draft for sure. Uh, we were able to get what I would say are two really, really good first-round talents at picks that they shouldn't be at. It's just crazy because everything had to play out perfectly for them mm -hmm. to be able to get both of these guys. Uh, the <laughs> Eagles would have had to trade up because otherwise the Giants probably would have stayed put, stayed put and drafted Devonta Smith. Um, and, yeah, Jenkins fell out. You know, it's a really deep offensive tackle draft, so I'm glad the Bears were able to move back up and get Tevin Jenkins. What a dream scenario getting two first-round talents in the first 40 picks for the Bears. Mm -hmm. Jalen, what do you think about this Tevin Jenkins pick? What grade would you give it? Oh, I'm agree with Park. I'm giving this an A++. You know, uh, a lot of people said this is a still of the draft. A lot of people had him projected to go in the top 15, you know, to mid first, late first. Some people, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, mock drafts that had us taking him at 20, you know, and we were able to, uh, you know, tra I, obviously we traded up 13 spots to, to go get him in, in the second round. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily get mad at Pace for trading up in this one because, what, we, we only gave up, uh, we, I know we gave up a, a fifth. And, but we got a pick back as well. Yeah, we got we got a pick back. A pick back. We got, I know we gave so we obviously we give up a third, and then we gave up a fifth. But we got a uh, we got a, a higher fifth back. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not not mad at, um, about him doing that. And now if he was giving up a future second, and he already gave up a first the day before that, then I would be a, a little eerie. But uh, a third round pick from from that day and, and a fifth, uh, and I know he gave up a six as well later on that day. I, I'm not mad about that at all. Got up and got a, a you know possible franchise tackle. Uh, who, who's who's gonna come? You know, right away. Obviously, uh, we, I knew he was gonna be have a, be a possibility to come and start, even if Leno didn't get cut. And obviously, Leno got cut a couple hours ago, so we know he's instantly gonna be a starter. Uh, you know, hopefully for for multiple years to come. Um, hopefully he's uh him him and Justin Fields be, you become our franchise. You know, tackle and franchise quarterback for for decades or for a decade at least. Yeah, uh, that would be great to see. And the Bears gave up their third-round pick, so we're going to move to uh, round five now. This was a little bit of an interesting one, and this is probably the only one that confuses me a little bit about out of the entirety of the draft. Pick 151, Larry Borum. He's an offensive lineman out of Missouri. He can do a little bit of guard and tackle work. I do think it was a good pick because purely based off his power, I do think he'll be able to figure out his way into the rotation eventually as a backup offensive lineman. Um, I do think he was taken a bit early, though. 
the Bears got really good value out of all their picks, except for maybe this one. You take a look at the a couple different draft boards. Uh, the Pro Football Focus one specifically, they had him as, I think, the 186th ranked prospect, and the Bears took him at 151. Otherwise, the Bears got prospects valued higher than where they were choosing. I'm going to give this pick a B. I, I think it's good for depth. Uh, I don't essentially think it's going to be any impact player by any means, but I'm excited to have Larry Borum in Chicago, and we wanted the Bears to address the offensive line, and they did exactly that. So I'm going to give this pick a B, and hopefully Borum can work his way into the rotation throughout the next couple of years. Parth, uh, what do you think about this fifth-round pick in Larry Borum? It's an interesting pick, uh, that's for sure. Um, he can play all over the offensive line. Um, but, you know, I could possibly see him, see him playing right tackle this year if anything happened to Fetty or Bars or, you know, anyone else um, in the O-line too, if at guard, if – you know, Daniels or white hair even got hurt. Um, but the dude has power. He has really good size. Um, he's athletic. Uh, and there's a lot of raw talent to work with. You know, Juan Castillo is a good offensive line coach. Um, this offensive line looks really good right now. And I think just adding a depth piece does not hurt. Uh, Ryan Pace knows that, you know, guys get hurt, especially at the O-line. We've had some unlucky injuries over the past couple of years. Um, so this pick does not hurt, especially because we released, uh, you know, longtime Bears starter Charles Leno today. You know, I think he played in 93 consecutive games. That's a very that's a very accomplishing task, uh, you know, especially at the position he's at that gets a lot, lot, lot of injuries. He's working in the trenches all the time. So huge, huge, uh, huge thing for Charles Leno right there. Yeah. And Larry Borum will definitely provide some offensive line depth exactly. so he can work his way into things. Jalen, what did you think about this pick? You think we picked him a little bit too early, or are you fine with the pick? Um, I'm fine with the pick. <laughs> you know, when, when we drafted him, I, I was a couple of our receivers in a couple of corners I wanted. But we, we've we been talking about how trash this offensive line has been, you know, for the most part of the season last year. You know, pace, you know, double dip it again like he did last year. Instead, instead, he drafted him in the second and the fifth instead of, you know, back to back in the seventh. So not mad at all about this one. Um, Obviously, we've seen why he he, he took him uh, because he obviously released Leno today. So, um, you know, him drafting, you know, him and uh, – and, and Tevin has probably gave uh, Pace, you know, flexibility to do that. We obviously still have uh, Alex Barnes who who can play both guard and uh, tackle. We um we obviously found a, a gem in my opinion in Sam Mustafer who, who who can play uh, center and guard who who played very well last year. Uh, when when we were dealing with a bunch of injuries, he was able to play uh, center and kick out wide here to to the guard position, and you know uh that that was able to build a very strong running game for uh, for David Montgomery, who, who ended up the season with 1,000 yards. Uh, and I had, like, 500 games in, you know, the the, uh, the, cup, the certain games that Mustafer was the center. So um, it gives us flexibility to have, you know, versatility all over the offensive line. And, uh, you know, I couldn't, I, I'm not mad about the pick, you know. Uh, I obviously think it was a certain player better than him on the board, Trey Smith, uh, offensive guard. Uh, offensive lineman out of Tennessee who won like the sixth round. He was falling for some reason. So um, I'll probably go to take Trey Smith over, over, over Larry, but um, I'm not mad about the pick. I'll, I'll give it like a solid B, B. Yeah, and I think the Bears are going to have one of the best offensive lines they've had in the past decade this year. Uh, you know, I think the starters is going to be something like Jenkins. We get Daniels back, Mustafer, White Hair, and Effetti, and they have some solid depth pieces. A lot of people forget that they brought in longtime Denver Broncos starter Elijah Wilkinson uh, to be a good depth piece as well. So the Bears have some depth on this line. Larry Borm's going to add to that. And here's where things get interesting in the sixth round. Let's kick it off with pick 217, Khalil Herbert, running back out of Virginia Tech. I don't think the Bears were in any dire need of a running back by any means. But I do like what Herbert brings to the table in terms of a special teams value player. He's someone who returned kicks his entire time at Virginia Tech. And the Bears' next player, four picks later, also is an interesting one that can help out in special teams and the receiving game. So I think eventually Herbert could work himself into a number three role. But remember that the Bears have Tariq Cohen, David Montgomery, and also brought in an interesting one in Damian Williams this offseason. So Herbert's definitely going to have to work his way into the rotation once again. Seems like Ryan Nall could be on the outs in Chicago. His time might finally be coming to a close. But I do like this pick. I'll, I'll probably also give it a B. I don't essentially think it was a good or a bad pick, but I think it's a solid value pickup. So I'm going to give that Khalil Herbert pick a B. Parth, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to give it a C. Uh, I was, you know... I think this was a confusing pick on my part, and I guess I was just confused why we took a running back. I understand that, you know, we do need some depth at that position. You know, when uh, I think uh, David Montgomery went down last year and obviously Terry Cohen was out for the whole entire year, we had some trouble with, 
you know, David uh, with Nall and Patterson and uh, uh, who else came in? I forgot. Uh, but Pierce. Pierce. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that was an, uh, that was a really bad running back room, anyways. So we we definitely need Montgomery to stay healthy. But I do I, after the signing of Damian Williams, this was a little bit confusing because I really like Damian Williams. I think he's an asset. He's going to be a great asset to this team. Um, but Khalil Herbert's probably going to find himself on the practice squad, uh, probably going to take over Ryan Null, obviously. I think Ryan Null's time in Chicago is over. Um, but he does have a kick-returning ability, and losing after losing Cordero Patterson, th- that could add some value. And if he does impress at that, um, the Bears could have him returning kicks. Yeah. Jalen, any, anything else to add about this Khalil Herbert pick? I was also, you know, kind of surprised because yeah. I was like, okay, six rounds, so a lot of talent here. Still on the board. Who are we gonna get? Are we gonna get a receiver? Are we gonna get a corner safety? Uh, it was like a running back. It's kind of, you know, a little shocked at first, but, but um, <clears throat> once I, you know, the uh, the ESPN ESPN started analyzing him, they were like, he, he gives us kick return ability, point return ability. Um, I I got the pick because. Uh, obviously, Tariq Corn towards ACL uh, on, on a punt return, and we just gave, gave him that money two games before that. So, um, obviously, it's Tariq Corn is, is uh, one of our biggest ads on assets on the offensive side of the ball. He provides us so much versatility. Um, I know he hasn't you know, met that 2018 ex- expectations because of I, I feel like Nagy has been using him uh, using him in the right way like he did uh, back then when he was uh, he had like 700 or 800 yards as a 5'6 uh, running back. So um, hopefully that, that takes, you know, uh, Tariq, Tariq Cohen's position at point returning so he can be, you know, more – spend more time on the offense is, is where we really need him. So, um, once again, I give it like a B, um, not an A type pick for me, because of like you said, not we didn't we really didn't need a running back because we you know we have three solid running backs in my opinion. But uh, I, I, now that I you know see why we took it, I, I understand the pick and I'm not mad about it. Yeah, and now we get into more interesting picks in the sixth round. Ryan Pace always great with these late round gems. A little bit of Darnell Mooney vibes here. Daz Newsom, wide receiver out of North Carolina with the 221st overall pick. Newsom's best season with the North Carolina Tar Heels came in 2019, 1,018 receiving yards, 10 touchdowns, also 684 yards and six touchdowns in 2020. The Bears brought in Marquise Godwin this offseason, assuming he's going to fill the void that Ted Ginn wasn't able to fill. Um, But I think the addition of Newsom, could possibly signal the end of Anthony Miller in Chicago. We saw trade rumors swirling before the draft. Uh, the Bears didn't use a high pick on him whatsoever, and I think he brings a lot of athleticism and speed to the position. Some have called him even a human highlight reel. Uh, so I'm really intrigued by this pick. He had 11.1 yards per catch, and also he had 48 punt returns while at North Carolina. So if the Bears want to kind of shy Cohen away from punt returns coming off of a torn ACL, uh, Daz Newsom's definitely someone who can step in there as well. And he ran a 4.57 40-yard dash, so I do think that the Bears are going to hopefully end up with a steal here. He has a little bit of drop issues and lacks a little bit of fluidity in his game, but overall I really like this pick. I'm going to give it an A-, minus, and I'm very glad he was available late a lot of people had him as a top 15 wide receiver on draft boards. And before having a little bit of a down 2020 season, he was seen as someone who could have possibly gone much, much higher. So I like this pick a lot. I think the bears got some incredible value here with Daz Newsom. So I'm going to give that pick an a minus. Uh, you guys have anything to add? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. I was going to say, I agree with you. It's a, it's a really good pick and he plays a slot and uh, he played most, he got most of his yards in the slot. And like you said, we are probably going to move on from Anthony Miller. Uh, which I'm excited about because I think Daz Newsom is going to bring some breath of fresh air. Uh, he's a really good route runner too, like like Darnell Mooney, and can se- separate himself from corners. So a lot a lot of speedsters on this team. Uh, I think uh, Justin Fields or Andy Dalton both are going to have some fun with all the receivers. Um, so actually, this is probably my uh, my favorite pick, you know, of day three. Um, I posted this on Twitter. I was like, I always have, you know, one guy or a couple guys that I'm a big fan of when we take in day three that I really want to see succeed. Obviously, I want to see every Bears player succeed, but, like, like really pushing for him, you know, to be good. Uh, last year was Darnell Mooney. We obviously see how he played out. Here before that, it was, like, uh, Duke Shelley. Um, and, you know, obviously, like, 2017, 2018 was, was Bilal Nichols and obviously Eddie Jackson. So um, this is this is probably one of my favorite guys that we took. Um, especially once I watched, you know, uh, you know, some tape on him, um, 2019 or yeah, 2019, 2020, he, he, he led, you know, uh, Carolina in receiving yards. He had over a thousand yards and if he would have came out last year, uh, he put, 
uh, he was projected to go third, second to uh, third round, and obviously he came back. Uh, was a down season because of because uh, of you know the, the pandemic and stuff like that. So didn't play as many games, and obviously uh, his teammate Diamond Brown uh, had a breakout season and, and you know went in the third round. So um, hopefully. Uh, you know, as a slot receiver, he ran he ran at four five seven in his pro day. But if you watch his tape, you see he's way faster than that. Um, mm-hmm. Like he he has games. Like mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's blazing, but if if he you know kicks in that second gear, you're not gonna catch him. So uh, hopefully that he can he can definitely get some play time. Um, we have a lot of receivers uh, in this room. If we don't if we keep Anthony Miller, he's another receiver that's probably gonna get play time over over Daz because we took him in the sixth round. We obviously signed Marquise Goodwin. Um, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, who, who was a very fast receiver. So, um, if he can get to, if he can get some, you know, PT and get on the field uh, in the slot, I definitely think he could be a, a huge impact in his rookie season for for Justin Fields or, or Andy Dalton. So, definitely one of my favorite picks. I'm I'm giving this a. Yeah, I'm gonna head into another pick that I like a lot here. Two twenty eight, Thomas Graham Jr. quarterback out of Oregon. He's someone who's known Jalen Johnson forever. They grew up in Fresno, California together. Um, and he opted out of the 2020 season due to COVID-19. Uh, but before that, for the Oregon Ducks, he had 183 tackles, eight interceptions, 10 and a half tackles for loss, and 32 pass breakups uh, in a couple of seasons. So I like this at 228. Pro Football Focus had him as the 76th overall player in the entirety of the draft uh, on their big board uh, and based on their analytics. So I think the Bears got another good one here, you know, obviously losing Buster Screen as well as Kyle Fuller. I think he could actually work himself into the rotation decently well. There's a lot of younger younger guys there that are going to be stepping up and getting opportunities. Desmond Truth on someone they brought in, but he's not the future at the cornerback position. So Kindleville Door, Duke Shelley, uh, Thomas Graham, Jalen Johnson. Should be interesting to see how they eventually play moving forward. But I do like this pick a lot. Um and I think he has the potential to actually make an impact on the field this season, uh, even if that's in a reserve role. So I'm going to give this pick a B plus. I like the value a lot once again, and I think Pace nailed this one. Uh, you guys got anything to add on Thomas Graham Jr.? I'm going to give it a B. Uh, you know, I think uh, he's a good corner. Uh, like you said, we have a lot of young corners on this team, so he can he can win some competition there and find himself a starting role on this team. Uh, do I see that happening? Probably not. I think Kendall Vildor is going to be a really good corner for the Sounds Bears. similar to when you said Matthew Stafford's a Hall of Fame quarterback. <laughs> hey, if he wins a couple Super Bowls with the Rams, I'm, that prediction is going to look really, really nice back. No, that's not happening. You are the you are the king of outlandish statements. And um, also, even if he won Super Bowls with the Rams, it wouldn't matter. You said that when he was with the Lions. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Before you didn't say season. he's going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. You're like Matthew Stafford, the Hall of Fame quarterback. Anyways, Jalen, anything to add on Thomas Graham? Oh uh, yeah, another another you know uh, a favorite pick of mine uh, of uh, this day three uh, Hall. Uh, like you said, a lot of people had him going way earlier. Uh, day two, day uh, they had him going in the third or early in the fourth round, and we were able to get him at six. You know, um, obviously, I, it was like I was watching somebody's reaction to it. Uh, he was like a draft analyst in uh, a corner that the Cowboys took and uh, picked like seventy something. They were like he had him higher rated than uh, higher rated than him on his draft board, and we were able to get him in the six in the sixth in somebody that was drafted in the, uh, the third round. So. Um, I'm gonna make a bold prediction like I did last year when we drafted Darnell Mooney, and I was wrong, but I was still right at the same time because he ended up being our second, uh, our number two instead of our number three, like I, predi- I, pre- I predicted. I'm gonna predict that uh, Thomas Graham Jr. is our slot receiver uh, starting the season uh, over Duke Shelley and Kendo Vador. Calling corner, yeah. yeah, yeah, really, yeah. Well, yeah. that, that's that, okay. That might have beaten part <laughs> statement, but what? no, hey, look, hey, look, I mean, I, 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 I was I, playing, I was playing, I, I, I was playing. <laughs> It's not like, really, I, it's, not, yeah. it's not really much of a competition, you know. Duke yeah, Shelley, I, yeah, he's a very solid, you know, talent. But Kendall Vidor, and the new, uh, and they're all coming into a new defense in, in Sean Desai or Sean Desai, and I, I feel like Thomas Graham could easily. Well, not, let me not say easily because he, he's still going to be a rookie, but I, I feel like he can beat them. Calling it, yeah, now. it should be interesting, and it's also intriguing to see how much you guys believe in him just seeing how far he slipped in the draft let's talk about the last pick this was a really interesting one uh i think i pronounced this kairis tonga um defensive tackle out of byu this man is a behemoth uh he appeared in 47 games at byu 
totaling 130 tackles, 16 tackles for a loss, eight and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, and 12 pass breakups for the Cougars. Man, uh, this is an interesting one, and I think it makes sense. I was saying during our mock drafts that I think it would be interesting for the Bears to bring in some sort of offensive lineman just because of all the talent they have there. He's going to sit behind Akeem Hicks and Eddie Goldman. I think he brings a very good physical prowess to the scene as well as versatility along the defensive line. He's a powerful run stuffer. And just look up a picture of the man. He is absolutely yeah. huge. So I like this, and I think he's vital for uh, adding a powerful nose tackle piece uh, after the Bears have lost a couple of pieces like Brent Urban and such throughout the last couple of months. So I like this pick a lot. I'm not sure how much he'll be able to do, but – He's I think a he massive man, a and I like it. So no, I, yeah, he, I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give it a B. He's massive. I actually like this pick a lot. I'm gonna give it an A. Uh, you know, the Bears lost uh, Brandon Urban in the off season. We also lost uh, Roy Robertson Harris in the off season. Uh, so he's gonna be have some time. Uh, he's gonna be part of that D line rotation. I know the Bears like to keep it rotating here and there. Uh, you know, Keem Hicks. Uh, you know, did get hurt last year. So you know, watch out for this dude. He's gonna he's gonna get some playing time. He's gonna play well. The Bears are also known to have just good de defensive linemen over the years. Nick Williams became a stud uh, with the Bears. Um, and then we saw Roy Robertson Harris find some success here. Now he's off to another team, getting a bigger contract, so good for him. Um, but I expect the same thing with Tonga. I think he's going to come in, learn from Hicks and this D-line, and get better and make some, make some solid impact. Oh, I, I agree. Like you said, uh, very, he is huge, especially when I, when I was looking him up. Like He's a, he's a, he's a big dude. Uh, that, like you said, um, I don't think he's going to get on the field right away. He's probably going to be inactive for the first, you know, couple games. But uh, injuries happen in the NFL season, so he's probably going to get some play time uh, if a couple dudes get, you know, nicked up here and there. Uh, be another, you know, great rotational piece that pays down in, you know, in the later rounds in the seventh, fifth, uh, even, even UDFA. Um, so uh, I, I'll give it, a, I'll give it a B as well. Um, solid, like I said, definitely think it's going to be solid rotational piece. Uh, uh, when it comes to rest, learn stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, and he'll be able to learn behind Bilal Nichols, Akeem Hicks, Eddie Goldman, so definitely we'll have some good yeah. time to try and breed him and make him an impact player on this team. Let's quickly talk about our overall draft grade for the Bears. I'll go first. I'm going to give him an A. Uh, I think when it's all said and done, this will be one of Ryan Pace's best drafts of all time, especially if the field's pick hits. Look, they did the two things they needed to in the first two rounds. They got a starting offensive tackle and somehow – they still got their starting quarterback. Um, I believe that they got some great value picks down the road as well. I would say probably the only head scratchers for me are Borum as well as Herbert. I think they got great value in the sixth round, and hopefully some of those guys can impact on this team down the road. But the Bears needed to do that. The Bears needed to get a darn quarterback. They did exactly that, so I'm going to give them an A in this one. And, man, I sure hope Justin Fields pans out. Parth, what would you give? This overall 2021 Bears NFL draft class a grade. I'm gonna give it an A as well. Um, I think this is one of the best drafts uh, like across the league. I think the Bears had one of the best drafts compared to other teams. Uh, Ryan Pace definitely uh, surprised me. I guess you could say uh, he brought me back on. I'm back in. The Bears are back. Um, it's, it's exciting times. Uh, you know we have Justin Fields at quarterback. Uh, we, we have ourselves a left tackle who's gonna be here for the next 10 years and win a bunch of Pro Bowls and all, all Pro Awards. And uh, hopefully Daz Newsom, Newsom can turn into that star slot wide receiver that we wanted Anthony Miller to be. And you call that a home run draft because the Bears really needed offensive help. And uh, they made that a priority coming to this draft. You can see that um, the, he did what they needed to do. And I'm excited to see what, what, what these guys can do on the field. Maybe we just need Ryan Pace's job to be on the line every year. Exactly. I think we should just draft. like th basically be threatening them almost every year to you know <laughs> just I don't yeah. know. Jalen, what what grade would you give this a draft overall? Um, I'm gonna give this an A. Now I'm not right right now. I'm not gonna say this is Pace's best best draft class. If Justin Fields hits, yeah, um, because a franchise quarterback, he instantly becomes our, uh, the, his best draft class because it's a quarterback and. The Bears are notorious for not having very good quarterbacks, but until this can beat out, you know, 2017, that obviously, you know, Mitchell Trubisky's in that in that draft class, but we still got Eddie Jackson, who's an All-Pro, Tariq Cohen was an All-Pro, that's three Pro Bowlers right there, or 2018, which had Roquan, uh, James Daniels, you know, Anthony Miller, who obviously played solid for us for you know two years. He obviously didn't play very good last year, but uh, Bilal Nick was in the fifth round, so 
Um, Pace has had some very good draft classes. I know, you know, it gets overlooked because he did miss on, you know, one of the biggest positions um, in the NFL, and that's the quarterback position. So, uh, but but like like pa- like Parf said, excuse me, this is the best draft class, you know, or one of the best draft classes in the whole entire NFL. And, you know, a lot of people have said that's not just us being biased. Yeah. Now, Bears fans, like a lot of people have said this is the A draft class, uh, just with the first two picks alone in Justin Fields and Tevin, Jen- and Tevin Jenkins. Uh, so I- I'm definitely giving an A. Um, and amazing, amazing job by Pace. You know, like like people say, uh, Bears fans woke up on Thursday, you know, angry. Like, what are we gonna do, or what are we gonna be as a team because we might not have a quarterback. And you know, after day two, we we're leaving the, the first two rounds with a with a you know franchise quarterback and a franchise left tackle. And um, I can't be mad about that at all. Yeah, and in comparison to his past drafts, these guys are still going to have to fill a certain void in Chicago, but. On paper, it looks like the Bears did a great job. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode number 232 of the Bear Down Podcast. Do us a favor, comment down below how you guys think the Bears did in this draft and give us a grade. Um, let us know how you think they did because we are definitely interested to know your thoughts as well. And once again, do us a favor, subscribe and like, follow whatever platform you're listening on. We're going to keep the Bears content coming back to you guys each and every day. If you want more content from us, head over to our website, beardown.com. We're posting columns, articles, and blogs, recapping the entire draft and giving grades as well. So be sure to head over to our website. The link is down in the description. If you'd like to find the podcast on social media, you can find it on Instagram and Twitter at bear down and finally <clears throat> i'm going horse um and finally uh if you would like to find us on social media you can see our thoughts on the entire national football league as well as the entirety of chicago sports because even though the bears just had a killer draft uh there are still some other sports going on and uh so some chicago sports talk that needs to happen about some other teams so you can find the links to our instagram and twitter pages down in the description Park Shaw, Jalen McClinton, this is the longest podcast we've recorded in a while. Feels good to be back on the grind, though, and it feels good uh, to feel peaceful and calm as a Bears fan for the first time in what has to be a long time. I mean, I, I haven't felt this good in quite some time, so any last words before we close this one out? Yeah, no, it's it's exciting times. Um, the Bears are on the uptrend, I guess you could say that. Um, they've made some good moves. We're not that dumb team, not that Ryan Pace isn't making dumb decisions to make us look bad, I guess, for once. Uh, we'll see how these draft picks pan out. Um, obviously, at the time, they look really good, um, but you never know at the end of the day. Um, but, yeah, ho- hope everyone's doing well. The weather's finally getting warmer outside, so I, I know like, people are going to start to go outside a lot more as well, so that's going to be fun. Um, not much either. Like I said, I have to I have to leave, so uh, amazing draft class by Pace. Can't be more excited, you know. The only thing about this is it makes me more excited than, for the upcoming season than I was. Uh, a week ago. So, uh, you know, bear down, stay safe, and that's about it. Yep. Ryan Pace addressed all the needs. And as Par said, it's getting nicer outside. It's getting warmer. Hopefully, we'll be able to head out to training camp this summer. Exactly. Assuming the Bears, the Sox game. Assuming the Bears uh, White Sox will be game. there. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff to do this summer. Uh, but the Bears are going to be, as always, one of the focal points for us. So, we're going to keep the coverage coming to you guys. So, be sure to like, subscribe, follow on every platform. Guys, it's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malfi. And Bears fans, as always, do us a favor and stay safe and bear down. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.